Hello, I'm Lisa from Small Kids Big God, and today I'm doing a Homeschool Confessions Open Collab. Um, Mommy and Mia Homeschool Chronicles started this collab, and I'm going to answer the questions. If you think it's interesting and you want to jump on in, it's an open collab, so just check the description box and you can see the questions and where to upload your video to the playlist. So the first question is, how many children do you homeschool and what are their ages? Um, I homeschool now two children. I have a seven-year-old in second grade now and a five-year-old in kindergarten, and I have two little ones that I don't homeschool, a three-and-a-half-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old. Number two, what is your homeschool schedule? Um, we homeschool four days a week, and that's just so we have an extra day to do other things that come up in life, like have um, play dates with friends or do a day trip somewhere or make up work if we didn't have time to do it or just go somewhere fun for the day. Kind of takes pressure off of us to fit everything in every day so that if it doesn't all work perfectly, we have a fifth day where we can fit in um, whenever we need to. Number three, do you take a summer break or do you have a homeschool summer schedule? We do take a summer break. It's not quite as long as the public schools and that's mainly because it just gets really hot here and by like July and August, my kids are needing something to do. And so we start back up school early in August. Um, number four, when it, coming off summer break, do you find it difficult to get back into your regular homeschool schedule or do you have a method that helps to ease you right back into your regular homeschool routine? Um, by the time we start school in summer, at the end of summer, our kids are ready to go. Like I said, it's hot. We've run out of ideas, we've had fun in the summer, and we're ready to get back on a regular schedule. My kids really like school, and it's always fun to get started with something new. Um, and honestly, they really thrive with a routine and a schedule. So we're all ready to get back when it's time to go. Um, number five, when homeschooling multiple children, what advice can you give other homeschoolers in regards to teaching and planning for different age levels, including caring for a child who's not the age to be homeschooled? Um, my one and a half year old is a challenge to me right now, homeschooling only because he's really active and all he wants to do is be everywhere doing all kinds of things. So he's not really a sit him down with crayons and a snack and he'll sit for a while like some kids are, like my daughter was. Um, so it can definitely be a challenge. My advice would be to adjust expectations, adjust your expectations and adjust your schedule. Um, mainly I find when I run into problems, it's because my own expectations were unrealistic. Um, my one and a half year old and my three and a half year old are little and they should behave as a one and a half year old and a three and a half year old behave. And so to expect them to sit quietly for an hour or something, like it just isn't realistic. Or maybe even to expect my little one to sit quietly for 15 minutes is not realistic. And so I need to work around that. It's not that he needs to work around me. Um, and then also adjust your schedule, use your time well. Um, when my little one naps or um, if I have a block of time, I need to use it and use it well. So the things that are most important or that require the most focus, I need to do those when my little ones are occupied. But I do try to be flexible too because it's it's a whole family thing. It's not just like my kid's school is priority over everything else we do in the family. Um, number six, has your child ever attended public or private school? Nope, we've been homeschooling from the beginning. Number seven, all children are unique learners and have their own learning styles. So when it comes to homeschooling multiple children, do you use the same homeschool approach with each child? So in general, I would say no. Uh, we don't. I kind of have like a bigger, broader idea of homeschool and how it should go in our home, but I try to do things differently with each kid as I've got a kindergartner now and I'm doing something different with him than I did with my older child because they're quite different children. And what's one of the great things about homeschool is that we do get to do it that way and tailor it to each child's needs. Number eight, when purchasing curriculum, do you make decisions based on age, grade level, or by your child's academic strengths and weaknesses. Um, since we have homeschooled from the beginning and we're not planning to put them in school anytime soon, we have the flexibility to not worry about grade level. Um, 
yeah, I don't get those books like everything your second grader needs to be doing. Not that there's anything wrong with those, but we don't need to follow that exactly. We can follow what, how my kid's learning. So what they need to know next might be two grades ahead or it might be one grade behind and that's okay. So I don't buy curriculum based on age or grade or anything like that. Um, question number nine, what coping mechanisms can you share that helps you stay focused when you're faced with an overwhelming day? such as your child not grasping a specific concept or material in a lesson, or if you're unable to grasp the information and find yourself hitting a brick wall and moving forward in the lesson. Um, I think taking a break is a good plan. Um, a lot of times the overwhelming issues we've come up with are generally attitude problems. And I think um, approaching a lesson with a different attitude, myself or my children, helps a lot. So I would say generally coming back to it later would be a good plan or trying to approach it from a different place. Number 10, from your point of view, what is the hardest thing about homeschooling? Um, I think that goes back to having the right expectations. I think every kind of like frustration I have ends up being because I want it to be a certain way and it's not that way. Um, in general, I love homeschooling and I love tailoring it to my kids' needs and spending time with them and learning and reading and watching them grow. Like really do love it. Um, so I think the hardest thing is it's just like, they're not doing it the way I wanted them to, or this one's being too loud or our whole day is blowing up for whatever reason. And really that's just my attitude and expectations. My kids are not little robots. And so I need to kind of take that into account when I'm putting, when I'm getting ready for the day and kind of like trying to expect what's going to happen. Um, yeah, I need to keep that in mind. Number 11, what is your own homeschooling philosophy? Um, I guess we lean more Charlotte Mason. Um, we're really big on, well, I think we're eclectic learners. Like I have, I haven't been homeschooling very long because my oldest is only in second grade, but I do have this confidence that a lot of new homeschoolers don't have. And I don't know why I have it. I think it's just something that God gave to me or it's my personality or whatever, but God put um, my husband and I in charge of our kids. And I just trust that we can homeschool them the way that's best for them. We love our kids and know them better than anyone. And so I don't really worry that we're not following what the public school does or we're not even doing Charlotte Mason the way Charlotte Mason did. And, and that's okay. Like <laughs> we're doing this for each kid um, the best that we can and trying to follow God's leading. So I guess I would say we follow Charlotte Mason-ish, um, but we do our own thing based on what we got what we think God wants us to do and our child's interest and how it fits in our family too. So I guess that was a long answer to say like eclectic um, with the Charlotte Mason leaning. <laughs> and then the last question is number 12. What is your motivation? What keeps you going and stops you from giving up? I really love homeschooling our kids. So my motivation is just the fun things about it. I mean, that doesn't mean I don't have days when it's just the worst, but I love reading with my kids. I like spending time with my kids. I love learning stuff myself. I like planning lessons. I like, um, my favorite things are sharing the Bible with them and reading. Those are my two favorite things. Um, and I get to watch my kids learn and their eyes be open. So like, when we're doing Bible study together and my kids like get into it or you can see it like click in their heads, I'm just so grateful that I get to be there for that. Or if they have a question, they ask me about it and I get to hear at that moment what was in their heart. Um, and that's what keeps me going on the hard days. I don't want to send my kids somewhere else and miss, miss out. Like I have such a good um, window into their heart because of homeschooling. And so that's what keeps me going on the bad days and keeps me from giving up. And, um, God certainly helps me with that too. So those are all the questions I hope you enjoyed. I'd love to hear other answers if you want to join in and thanks to mommy and Mia for, um, starting this collab. See you next time.